everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, we're looking at the precision contrast filter. I had to look up on my screen there for a second. Precision contrast filter. I have this image right here. This is not my image. I got it off of unsplash.com, but I thought it would be a good one to show you the precision contrast filter. So it really pops a lot of contrast and details out of your image. It's one of my favorite, all-time favorite Topaz Studio filters, okay? It's been around with Topaz for a while, even before Topaz Studio, by the way. But let's look at this image, okay? So here is the after. Here is the before. So this is the image without any extra contrast adjustments and here it is after so pretty cool right and you'll notice we have no effect up in or change up in the sky here that's due to our masking right here let's go ahead and reset this filter and start from scratch so let's come right here where it says precision contrast see this little icon here give that a little click with your mouse and we've reset the filter okay Again, as I always tell you, uh, right here we have our opacity. This adjusts the amount of uh, effect that we're applying from this filter here. I'm going to leave it up at 100%. And then, of course, we have blend modes and we have presets and we have a trash can. We can get rid of the filter should we decide, hey, we don't really want to use it after all. In our case, we do want to use it, so let's get started. Now, let's look right here. See where it says contrast? And you have these four sliders here. You have micro, low, medium, and high. And then let's look at this section called lighting. This deals with the lighting of the image. Obviously, we have shadow tones, midtones, and highlights. And we have this really cool section here where it says equalization, low, medium, and high. That's really awesome. And also we have color. So we have saturation, vibrance, and color contrast. So this is really neat because it's a precision contrast filter, but we're also dealing with lighting and we're also dealing with color in this filter, which gives us a lot of power that we can do a lot of nice stuff to the image here. So let's start out here by adding some uh, micro contrast to the image. And when we add micro contrast, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop some details out here. So let me go ahead and adjust this to the right. See the details starting to really pop? in the image there. I'm going to pull it up pretty pretty much here because I think it looks really good and this image can take it. I'm not really uh, much of a fan of what's happening in the sky here, but we'll take care of that with masking in a little bit here. For now, we're just mainly looking at the mountain and the trees here. So now let's take our low contrast and let's move it up. Now we can move it to the right or watch. We can move it to the left and we could smooth out the contrast or smooth out the details in the image here, which is nice for clouds and things like that if you'd want to smooth things out. In my case, I'm working with the mountain. So I want to just, again, pop some of those low contrast areas up, give them a little more contrast. Okay, right there. And here's our medium contrast. Let's move it the whole way to the right. Don't be afraid to move these sliders to the right and left because you're going to find out what they actually do. And it's important that you know what they can do. So there's to the right, there's to the left. So I'm going to find a point that my eye likes, and that's going to be right around here. Now let's look at the high contrast to the right. It's mainly dealing with the main, uh, main contrast areas of the image where you have a lot of lights and a lot of darks. Let's pull it the whole way to the left. See, we can make our picture look really ugly. U-G-L-Y, ugly. So, typically on the high, I'm not doing too much with it. In fact, I'm going to double-click high so I can set that back. And this is a typical adjustment for me where my micro is up further and then my low is a little bit less and the medium is a little bit less, kind of in that bit of a diagonal line there. That's kind of how I do it and it kind of looks good. But by all means, you experiment and get it to look just the way you like it. Now, let's click on the eyeball. Here's the before in the after and i'm liking what's happening there again i'm not liking what's happening to the sky but we'll fix that in a little bit so let's click on precision contrast again so we can get our controls back up now let's go to the lighting here so after adding the extra contrast here i noticed i blocked up some of my shadows and things so let's take our shadow slider and move it to the right a little bit and let's just open up those shadows a little bit look that looks really nice i like that this is our mid-tones so let's adjust our mid-tones and see maybe bring those mid-tones up just a little bit now our highlights if we're blowing out any highlights we can move this highlight slider to the left or move it to the right whichever we like i might just maybe slightly move it to the right. I think that looks pretty good there. Let's take a look at the before and after. So come up to this eyeball, give it a click. There's before and after. Mm, I'm liking that. Click precision contrast right here on this layer right here so we can get our controls back up. Anytime you click the eyeball, it gets rid of the controls. So you have to come here and give this a click 
or I'm sorry, you have to turn the eye back on and then click right here to get your controls back up. Let's take a look at this equalization here. So we have low equalization, medium, and high. And this is dealing with your lighting of your image here. So not exactly sure exactly what this does, but I'm just clicking these and watching the effect on my image. And high seems to like blend things out a little bit more medium, you know, not quite as much and low. So it's a more even image. I don't know if I'm explaining that right, but it looks a little more even to me on high. Medium, there's a little more drama in it, and low, a little more drama, a little more contrast. So generally right around medium is where I'm going to keep it, but but play with these. Just just click them around and see, which, see if you get it to where you really like it, if it makes a difference. And now let's look at the color. Now if we move the color to the right, we'll add more color to the image. Move it to the left, we'll take... Uh, color away or saturation away. So let me double click and I'm just going to leave it where it is. And then of course we have a vibrant slider which is going to pull up the weaker colors or lessen them depending which way you adjust the slider to the right or left. I'm going to double click that because I like the color right there. But here's a really cool little slider. Color contrast. This is an odd little slider and I really like it. And it just deals with color contrast. Again, we're looking at a precision contrast filter, so why not add a color contrast filter? Thank you, Topaz. This is a really cool little adjustment here. So notice when I move this color contrast to the right, it's only affecting the color contrast of the image. But see how I can bring some of these colors up in here? And it's still in some things in here, making these trees look a little brown. I'm not really liking it so much, but I've used this before, and it's it can be really effective depending on what you're using. On this image, not so much, but don't forget to play with it. No, you can also move it to the left and cut some of that color contrast down. But you know what? I might just slightly bump it up a little bit. I just like some of the yellows that are coming out in the in this uh, mountain here. All right, so maybe right about there looks pretty good. Now, as I said earlier, I don't like what's happening to my sky. So let's come up here to the masking icon. And of course, we I clicked it there. So we opened up the masking dialog here. I'm going to click on the brush. Make sure my transparency, transparency, transparency is set to black. Uh, and if it's not, you can adjust it, but generally it's going to default at black, but you can adjust it anywhere you like it, but we're going to leave it on black because I want to hide this up in here. I'm going to take my radius and pull that up looking at my uh, brush icon there. So I'm going to make, I'm going to make that relatively big and the softness, I'm going to leave it 50 and I'm going to leave the edge of wear on because this is nice. So watch, I'm just going to paint across here. Not going to be too careful because... Uh, there's really nice intelligent brushing here in Topaz. I'm going to come down over the mountain. My green area is going to go into the mountain, but I'm not going to touch the mountain with the red part, okay, of the brush. So it's going to uh, really attach nicely around that mountain. I don't know if that's the right word, attach, but or adhere to that area. And I'm just going to keep painting away. And I'm just painting with my mouse here. I have a Wacom tablet but I'm just using the mouse and it's, it's fine. Okay. And look at that mask right there. That's a really accurate mask. Now let's go ahead and do the before and after, as you can see, we're only affecting the mountain. That is really neat. Well, that's the precision contrast filter. Again, I love this filter. It's an awesome filter. I use it all the time. Well, thanks for joining me again today here at The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. If you liked the video today, please give it a like and also share it with your friends. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so and hit the bell notification icon. This way you'll be informed of all the new training videos I'm putting out. Well, thanks again for joining me and I'll see you guys right here 